Welcome to the virtual studio party for Saturday, November 14th. I'm Kim Lee Co. And off camera is my co-pilot. Hello. Cal Honey. Welcome Part aboard, everyone. Partner in life, partner in creativity, partner in mischief, whatever. <laughs> um, partner in mischief. That sounds fun. Yeah. I think that's good. Yeah. Sometimes victim of mischief. <laughs> 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 well, it's a, it's, a, it's a funny old life, right? Yeah, well, I can get up to quite a bit of mischief when I'm when mm -hmm. I have enough energy to be mischievous. So, uh, another glorious day here in Southern Ontario, and uh, so I imagine some people are out in it, although not as warm as unseasonably warm as it was last weekend, um, but sunny. And uh, Cal, Cal promises or threatens me that we're going out after this is over for a walk. I'm usually fried at the end of the virtual studio party, but that's fine. Um, getting outside is such a good thing to do while it's this nice and before winter sets in. And also because we're now looking at another lockdown, right? Because the, the COVID numbers are so bad in the GTA uh the major, the major population area in Southern Ontario. I don't know how they are in the rest of Ontario, but um, yeah. Certainly not looking it's good. not good. Anywhere where there are a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, stay safe out there, everybody. Yep. And uh, get or those. in there. <laughs> yeah, in there. <laughs> stay safe at home, wherever you are. Yeah. And uh, wear those masks cart around that Purell gel. And yeah. um, anyway, uh, so the virtual studio party, I make stuff and uh, explain some of it as it go along and we chat. So if you're uh, able to be signed in, you can participate in the online chat to the right of the video window. And uh, I'd love to, I'd love you to say hi and um, say where you're coming from if you care to share that and uh, if you did bring something to work on or play uh, materials to play with um, I'd love to know what those are because it's always interesting to know what everyone else is working on and uh, and if you didn't bring a project or materials that's totally fine you can just hang out um, relax have some re some refreshments it's self catered though um, uh, <laughs> distant the the distancing requires that um so i just uh started teaching uh contemporary mixed media explorations a new version of the course where um you know the latest edition of it and and this one is focused on incorporating textiles with other media in the mixed media and looking at a whole bunch of different ways of of working with textile like things and working with textiles themselves and, and so on. So I thought um, I'm pretty tired today and I thought it would be nice to uh, do some quiet stitching. Um, I've got uh, an, an old embroidery hoop here. I'm not sure if this was my grandmother's or a step aunt's, but uh, step I've never seen that hardware before. Yeah, it's, it, it's yeah. That's it's clever. interesting because there's um, instead of a screw to tighten, uh, you you push down on this, and it opens it and up. it opens up a gap, and then springs closed again. Yeah. yeah. So this this huh. metal is the spring. Wow. And um, if Kirk's joining us, he might be interested. He might not have seen one of those either. Yeah, it's quite interesting. And, and in fact, when I was re I had something in this that I was trying to remove, and it. It was um, proving recalcitrant, uh, <laughs> and part of it was that the fabric had gotten pinched in that little miter oh, the, the miter split. The, so, yeah. um, and it's it grips it quite firmly. So that's fine. Now, what I thought I would do is get. Um, uh, I have an old pillowcase, very faded black, um, and it, it's a nice old cotton. Um, and I thought that would be nice to work on with, I'm presuming I have some red embroidery thread in here somewhere. 
um, over here. But uh, what I'm going to do is work on one of my anatomical hearts. Ah, yes. Um, classic. I, I have a whole lot of references of antique anatomical hearts because that is a, a major focus of my art, art practice. I have a, a pretty large now body of work uh, related to it, um, literally and um, more laterally, I guess. Um, anyway... There's some wonderful things in here. Hopefully the reflections won't be too bad, but you know, old engravings. Yeah, that's coming across well. Good. And uh, um, I just love the structures of the heart. So one of the things that really amazed me when I, when I started to work on hearts is there are, you know, the phrase pulling your heartstrings. These are, the actual anatomical heart strings, um, they exist. Uh, so They're just I've, there for tugging on. I just thought that was amazing when I found that out because it's a you know, phrase we use. So it, it's, it's lovely. This is one that identifies some of the major structures. Cool. And I've drawn from that. I've drawn, uh, mm -hmm. I've done live drawing performance. In fact, uh, doing a mural. Um, but in fact, this whole duotang contains the references I used for the 2018 in situ festival where I did uh, three live drawing performances doing drawing in charcoal on a on a painted brick wall in an old factory space, uh, a heart based temporary mural. So um Oh, you're taking your hand up for that. Oh, sorry. Just, no, I was just curious in the one you showed us last. So yeah, with the little frilly thing. And the, um, the is, is that type actually um, typeset or is it the hand lettered? It looks like it might be like serif, but hand lettered. Is it, can you tell? I can't really tell yeah, from sorry. this. Little type, That's all right. I, I need to see the... Uh, this is a digitized yeah. version of an original. So yeah. anyway, now where's the one I was going to work from? Might've been that one. Yeah, I think it was that one. Are you so, looking for something that has strong lines? I want to get into some veins. I love, <laughs> I love me some veins and arteries. So uh, that's something I'm definitely looking for. The art of arteries. Yeah. Hold this back a little bit now. Yeah. Or is it okay? Oh, actually, yeah, I guess pull it back a bit. Um, so just in case, I don't know who's here. So in case you're not familiar with the virtual studio party, I have a playlist on my YouTube channel that has all the past uh, parties. So you can always watch a replay if you miss one or miss part of one and, and would like, or would just like some some uh, company in your studio, some similarly creative company. Um, so please take advantage of that. Oh, that's a bit of a problem. I've chopped off my head. All right. <laughs> Actually, maybe we can um, put wedge something under here. Just to give it a little more height. Yeah, but then we have to adjust that. All right. Well, we'll figure this out. Uh, that's that's probably a decent amount of space, and I'll just keep it close to me. Okay, that's good. So, first thing I have to do is sort of deconstruct this pillowcase a bit. You're gonna un unstitch it? No, I'm not gonna be that. Um, you're just fussy. Gonna, I'm just right. gonna cut. <laughs> <laughs> right, no stitch ripping for her. That's right. Yeah, well, no need, right? So, yeah, needle crafts are are um, have really made a big comeback as art, you know, uh, or surged as a as an important medium in art in the last. I don't know. 10, 15 years is what I've observed, but others may have seen it earlier. And um, 
and artists use them all different kinds of ways. So sometimes artists are using uh, needle crafts like uh, crochet or knitting, but what they're crocheting or knitting is wire. Uh, maybe they're doing human organs in wire using crochet or they're um, making sculpture from strings of paint and crocheting them like large scale sculpture that hangs from the ceiling. Um, not to mention working into photographs with embroidery or, I mean, it just goes on and on and on really. Um, and I just love that bringing together, opening up the world of, of what is an art medium. Susan Abbott has joined us. Hello, Hi, Susan. Susan. Thanks for coming out or yes. staying home to yeah. joining us. <laughs> That's right. For, not for going out. <laughs> yeah. Coming out virtually. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. great. What are you uh, working on today or are you just hanging out? Are you Have you got a project underway that you're going to work on? I was just thinking that um, there's a long history of working on needle craft type stuff in community, right? Like the, yes. this whole idea of like hanging Stitching out. Stitching bees and knitting yeah, bees exactly. and quilting bees and whatever. We're, we're doing it with art, but there's something interesting about it being uh, yeah. more in alignment that way. Yeah, it's um, lovely. I find for me that uh, working on artwork, some, some kinds of artwork, I can't have a conversation at the same time as I'm making yeah. the art. But some, like if I'm doing something repetitive or um, or labor intensive, or I sort of have the plan and I know what I'm doing and it's just a case of executing, having company is really great for that, right? Yeah. You can have a conversation and just sort of chip away at whatever you're working away on. I agree. So I guess I could just rip this now. <laughs> there she goes. It's very satisfying, <laughs> I have to say. She's on a tear. Um, yeah, if you're interested in seeing some uh, some of the the art giants who worked in textile, um, I can recommend three of the art. Well, I've shown a few artists in the course. Uh, we've had two classes so far, and um, uh, Louise Bourgeois, French American. Uh, artist who lived to have lived and worked to a very ripe old age, and um, she didn't only work in textile, but it was an important part of what she did. Yeah, that's good. And um, <clears throat> a giant Canadian in this field who intentionally set out to reclaim the textile arts and needle-based arts for the for art as opposed to the lesser arts yeah. um was joyce wheeland who um she was just a giant in canadian art history and um died i think in the late 90s um and she was married to another giant of Canadian art who's still with us, Michael Snow. And together, what a what a powerhouse. powerhouse art couple. My God. We should be like that. For, <laughs> eh, Cal? Forging absolutely, ahead. Absolutely. So Susan replies, trying to get motivated in the studio, so tuned in here. A few things not quite right. finished. Probably we'll try to figure out what they need. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That's a good. This kind of noodle around. Yeah, look at putter. things. Think about what. Hmm, what might this need? It's an artistic putter yeah. situation. That's great. And Marie Payne has just joined us. Hi, says, Marie. And says hi, you two. Just watching and listening today. Still yep. working on a project from a few weeks ago. Great. Great. All right. Well, if you've just joined us, I'm working on a. Um, a heart in stitching and um, in stitchy <laughs> an anatomical heart and uh, you know um, it's it's basically like doing a drawing except I'm going to be stitching 
And that I find is a lovely, direct, simple way to get into anything. So um, something like drawing is my best way into subject matter or um, even a way of thinking because um, drawing is a way of thinking too. And uh, so just substitute stitching in this case. All right, which is the inner one? That's the inner one. Try not to get all sorts of wrinkles in this, Kim. That would be annoying. Okay, there we go. Now let's see if I can I'd like to get a little more tension in it. Hey, Philippa has just joined us. Hi there, Philippa. Hi, welcome Philippa. Back. Welcome back. Welcome aboard. She says, made it. <laughs> I'm glad you did. Yeah. Thanks so much for coming. I know I'm competing with another beautiful day. Hopefully, uh, you're joining us from a place where you can at least get some of the sunshine in the window. Um, there. Got some nice tension there. Not quite as taut as a drum, but it's looks nice and smooth. Ta-da. Philippa, if you've just joined us, I'm doing some uh, stitching uh, related to my current contemporary mixed media course that uh, incorporates textile and textile processes with other media. And I'm working on a heart. What a surprise, right? <laughs> I know you know that I do a lot of hearts. Philippa oh, says, hi, I always ha seem to have trouble finding us. Lots of sunshine here. <coughs> well, here too, I think we're, I see a few clouds, but we've definitely got lots of it's bright It's really sunshine, nice and sunny great. here. Yeah. Good for the soul when other things are Ah, uh, yeah, Art. it gives you the fortitude to face the challenges, eh? Exactly. I have a couple of um, Chinese thimbles that I love. I bought them years ago. I don't oh. even remember where. You're big and for. Oh, I think in Hong Kong. That's right. So, uh, yeah, I'll give you a close-up on it. So they're enameled. They're cloisonné. And uh, wow. this one has a crane, which is a symbol for long life. I love the overlaps, like the, the legs from one going. Or are those clouds behind clouds, it? Clouds, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. And then uh, ducks, a pair of ducks. I don't know if the light's catching it right. There we go. Marie says, beautiful. Yeah. It's lovely working with objects like that. Um, to have something beautiful that's a utilitarian. Yeah. Philip, it says, that's an art piece. I have to Pardon me. I seem to have a hair in my mouth. There uh -oh. we go. Jeez. You are what you eat. <laughs> well, I hope not in this instance. Yeah, hopefully not. Okay. I should probably buy like a massive skein of, of red embroidery thread or something because that is my favorite color. Can you tell? <laughs> and hearts, you know, it comes up a lot. Blue comes up, too, because I follow the uh, anatomical convention of red for oxygenated blood and blue for deoxygenated. Although in this particular embroidery or stitching effort, I'm not going to. It's just going to be monochromatic.
Maybe I'll use this one. So, Philippa, are you uh, hanging out and just relaxing, or are you working on one of your figurative pieces or a I collage? She, didn't she say she was? No, that was Marie that said yeah. she was hanging yeah. out. Yeah. My mistake. I have a little color coordination going on in, on this table. There's me. There's my project. And there's my little my little hammer. <laughs> <laughs> Red and black is taking over. Red and black rules. <laughs> uh, I made this little needle case out of a uh, gift card tin. And uh, so I keep some of my sturdier needles, not the biggest needles, but some of my sturdier needles. And at the bottom, I have a magnet. And so those are clinging to the magnet, which is really handy. I, I do have a little fetish for little boxes and tins, so um, it's always exciting for me when I dream up a, a practical use or an artistic use for for one of them. Or both. Yeah. In fact, on that theme, back here is my, I have a magnetic whiteboard. That's what all these layers are hanging from. And so um, I have a, quite a collection mostly donated to me by a student of Cal's some years ago of these Cheems ginger candy tins. They're just beautiful tins. They're embossed. They have gorgeous typography, which with my um, history as a graphic designer, look at the details there, the little moons. Um, it's, I find it thoroughly entertaining. The yeah. little... It's got a little manicule, that hand thing there, pointing to, well, I can't read it now, but um, hmm. some information. So it's a beautiful little tin. It comes with a sliding lid. And I just thought, I need to dream up uses for this. And uh, so I turned it into the holder for my whiteboard markers. And um, I just, I have a couple of small rare earth magnets inside the tin. And uh, as soon as I put it near the, the board, it snaps right on and it's very secure. I've done something similar with a mustard powder tin, I think, too, in the kitchen. So Susan says hammer, not commonly associated with embroidery. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't taken one of my textile based courses, Susan. <laughs> Yes, I, in fact, I used it yesterday in a short demo. Uh, and that's also why I have this piece of scrap wood. <laughs> yes. I think it's safe to anyone who knows me knows that it's a it's pretty safe bet that I'm going to have some um, slightly unusual or innovative approaches to whatever whatever the topic is, and that's part of the fun for me. All right. really can't see my table very well and see me at the same time, so no, that's not helping. I don't know what it is today. Can't get the angle right. Okay, that's going to have to do. But I'm sort of, when I sit up straight, it goes right through my eye line. So I'll slouch. You could um, lower your chair a titch if you can stand to work a little closer. To your there we go. All right, that's what I'll do. Thank you. Philippa says, right now I'm just watching, but will shortly morph into the other room to work on my most recent, yesterday, painting slash collage piece. Cool. I found a model I really like who is zooming out of Sedona. Oh, cool. That's wow. neat. Yeah, the, I know uh, some of the models uh, that uh, we're familiar with have... And some were right on it and some were a little 
trying to took a little while to figure it out, but I know some have figured it out definitely. Um, Annika's doing it. Um, who's that? The male model that you really like? Um, he's doing it too, right? I'm blanking <laughs> on his name too. So. <laughs> oh my god! I can't believe it. Uh, French name. Uh, oh god. Etienne. Etienne Buxton. Yeah. Yeah, he's doing he, it. he he does a fabulous one by all accounts. So if you're looking for a zoom zoom model, um, I know Steve Petrichik uh, was yeah, doing Petrichik one or, yeah. or whatever. Yeah, I'm not sure how to pronounce his name. So um, most people call him Steve P. <laughs> oh, and um, oh my God, what is it with me and names today? Who, like, give me a hint and I might be able to help. Gorgeous. Tall, blonde, but um, little mohawk. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, M. It's the letter M, right? I know who you mean, but not Megan. Oh man. Yeah. Well, hopefully it'll Co occur. COVID to me. and middle-aged brain. There. She's are... one of my favorite models, and I, I can't believe I can't remember her name. Unbelievable. I can picture her, but I'm also having trouble remembering her name. All right, I need my wax. Where's my wax? I'm not going to do very well without it. This is one of my big needles. It's like, a, I think it's for sales or something. I keep it with a cork on it. That's That's quite the needle, isn't it? Don't mess with Kim. You don't want to cross a person brandishing hardware nah. like that. No. Now, one of the things uh, about my stitching today is, um, you know, I'm interested in stitching as mark making. And so um, I'm going to start off tamely, but I may... If this spirit, if I feel it in me today, I will um, be pushing the the way I approach the stitching beyond uh, uh, the confines of what would be considered good, tidy embroidery oh, stitching. Oh, well, I expect no less. I mean, come on. Yeah, Cal would be disappointed if I weren't myself. And That's right. That would be one of the things. Okay, I think that's a long enough thread for me to work with. For now. We just uh, recently upgraded our internet service and uh, it's changing our lives. Because we're constantly uploading videos of classes, downloading resources videos and, and resources and, uh, and live streaming like this. And it's just incredible how much, I mean, it used to take me hours to upload a single class to YouTube. And now it takes maybe 45 minutes. It's, it's like night and day, really remarkable. All right, that one just needs a bit of spit, apparently. I might have to actually cut that in, but it's not. Um... There, that's going to be better. Sometimes you can get it through by folding it back on itself. That's Maybe. true. Well, and of course, is the problem of middle-aged eyes, right? Oh, that's... <laughs> Yeah, I, I did a lot of embroidery when I was younger. Yeah. And I'd been away from it for a long time and then I introduced it as a possibility in one of our one of my classes. And yeah. it was like I, I had to thread needles again. I was like, <laughs> Oh my god, this is <laughs> And it used what, to be so easy, what has right? Happened to, like, yeah. It's the true. hands knew what they were doing, but yeah. uh, but not enough without the help of the eyes. <laughs> Crazy. 
I need a new prescription too. But honestly, you know, COVID year has not really been the year for me to go to an eye doctor. It's, you know, it turns out you, you can get COVID through your eyes if your eyes get exposed to the virus through the, through the tear ducts, presumably. And uh, yeah, so going to an optometrist just doesn't seem like the right thing to be doing right now. But boy, I sure could use a new prescription. Okay, so I need a piece of chalk to draw. <laughs> I'm making slow progress today, but that's uh, not surprising. You're allowed. It's Saturday. It's Saturday. You're with friends. It's a low this pressure. This is meant to be chilled out. Exactly. Chilled out. No one out there in YouTube land is, is wishing that you would be more type A today. Oh, right, there guys? might There might be someone, but, you know, <laughs> I, I, I'm afraid I'm going to disappoint you <laughs> if that's the case. Um drawing with some chalk pastel, not Taylor's chalk. Um, <laughs> chalk pastel is my, my trusted friend, so I have lots of it. It's going to be quite a small heart, but that's fine for now. It will allow me to um, complete it quickly. I might not have enough room to do very, be very expressive with it, but uh, it will help me learn working with the heart in this medium, and that's that's really important. I'll show you what the drawing looks like in a minute. The first uh, nine months of this year, I, I don't know about you guys, but I felt too taxed by the circumstances to, um, to take on any extra stuff other than this, uh, you know, starting up the virtual studio parties and joining Cal on when he started up his collage jams. Well, and we did start up teaching online pretty quickly to be yeah, fair, so. But... That's extra just because it was adjusting to that, but it wasn't, we were already teaching is what I mean. Right, right. But um, so. Like new projects. What I, yeah, new projects. Um, not that there've been none, but you know, more limited than there might've been. And um, one of the things I was really not doing was applying for professional opportunities. Um. I don't apply to enough of them in general um, by my standards. Uh, but of course you shouldn't compare yourself to other people, right? Um, but I really didn't apply for things. And uh, I finally have, am starting to apply for things again. So that's a, I'm feeling good about that because it, it marks a new, a new stage, I guess. What's that phrase? Having skin in the game, like it's yeah. uh, like having stuff out there is. I think pretty very waiting important to for hear you, about. Right? Yeah, because I I um. You know, I I apply to opportunities that really give me a chance to um, do projects I can't that aren't small or that aren't public or that you know that give me a chance to grow and stretch and exercise skills and ideas I have that need 
a bigger venue, a bigger uh, budget, a bigger audience, um, you know, whatever, or grants, uh, that kind of thing, or prizes so that um, I can fund interesting new work. Uh, because, you know, I have a, I have a big backlog of ideas I've never been able to do because I just don't have the funds for them and or the venue. But, you know, if you, if you can make the work, you can often find the venue. Philippa says, I used to do a lot of embroidery. Did it's you? something I used to love to do, but now I have arthritic fingers, so they're not so nimble anymore. Yeah. It's wonderful to see you are doing it, too. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, uh, in in the contemporary mixed media course I'm teaching, which where we're doing textile stuff, including stitching, um, some of my uh, approaches to stitching uh, don't require good finger use they're much <laughs> yeah. uh they're a bit different so um yeah so i have one student with rheumatoid arthritis you know which really affects her hands and and uh she'll be fine you know uh, she won't she won't take on the fine work and that's totally fine <laughs> no pardon pun the pun no pun intended pardon the pun someone we knew was was it Kate from Redhead who was doing, but I think more than one artist was doing uh, embroidery as part of a larger project where they were embroidering things, but yeah. they showed some of the picture, some photographs of the backs of them and they were great. Oh, yeah. and Lisa Irvine did that too, I think. Um, well, Catherine Hurd, uh, who's a well-known uh, contemporary artist, who in Toronto for a long time, but she's moved to Windsor where she's a, she's a professor at the university there and, um, and she can afford to buy a house. So, you know, I can see the attractions. Um, mere mortals can afford to buy houses in, in Windsor. So um, anyway, she had a project where she was uh, bringing in volunteer artists to help her with this. Uh, in fact, it was red, needlework too and um producing lots and lots of little pieces i think it was that's interesting the black fabric is getting snarly and individual threads are coming maybe because it's old fab old, and oh, old it's sort of like breaking as you go through it kind of thing maybe a little bit yeah so anyway, that's interesting. That'll add that'll add character. A new a new wrinkle. Um, you know, that that that's another interesting tradition in art, and that was needle art, right? Where a number of artists just helped out one artist with her project by doing some of it. And some years ago I uh I needed help on lots and lots of really large drapery panels um, drawing like 14 feet high by, I don't know, five feet wide. Um, I don't know how many I had, 10 of them, something like that. And I was trying to draw chain link pattern onto them in black black paint pen and white paint pen. So two layers on each huge amount of labor. And I was so blessed to have people, um, a whole lot of artists and students and friends sign up for collaborating on it. Did I show you the drawing? I don't think I did. So there's the heart. Okay, so that's what I'm working with there. And the chalk pastel will wash off. It's going to be good and snarly, this thing. Well, that's good. 
I suppose partly because I, I chose not to use a sharp needle. It, you know, it has a... Yeah, so it sort of uh, breaks partially Pushing through, through yeah. Than, uh, Just because it, holding it in my hand, it's a more substantial needle, and that's sort of what I needed today. So that's fine. So, you know, however the tool interacts with the material is, is going to determine aspects of the character of this, and that's... That's kind of how I work with tools and materials and processes anyway, so. It is indeed. Yeah. Uh, it's like I, I have a an ink drawing called Hearts Are Messy. And so if this is messy, I'm totally cool with that. Mm -hmm. This will just be another another form of Hearts Are Messy. Okay. Let's see if I can. Might be an opportunity here for me to bring in some. bigger marks, bigger stitches. Yeah. Get some X's in there. I'm very fond of X's. I don't know why, but So I don't know what you've been enjoying watching or reading these days, but I've been watching Case Histories. Is anyone else? Um, it's on Prime. And um, it stars Jason Isaacs, who's a really a, quite a wonderful British actor. He played um, Lucius Malfoy in Harry Potter with the long blonde hair and aristocratic snobbery, but a delicious voice. Um, I watched an interview where he explained his inspiration for the voice. He combined a couple of people he knew. Uh, anyway, so he plays a, uh, a private detective, former police officer that has some very different, uh, I don't know. Seems to take on certain kinds of cases because of his personal history. Anyway, I have two seasons of it. If you're kicking around looking for something to watch and like uh, a nice mystery, um, I certainly recommend it. There, now it's getting nice and messy. <laughs> so now I feel a little happier. A little more life in it. Oops, little snarls coming. <laughs> Let's 
So I had a tidy row of stitches originally, and now what I've done is such a small scale, it's hard to get it close enough up. But I feel like there's a little more life in them now. Yeah. yeah. And you so. can I think I can make out the distressing of the fabric too. Can you? Yeah. yeah, that's good. That's the thing, right? This is, you know, embroidery for the purposes of art. Depends on your artistic intention, but it's it's about bringing life to the image with the medium, not necessarily, in fact, for me, often very much not about showing, using it as a display of your technical skill with the medium. It can show it if that serves the other primary objective. Um, but I'm, I'm going to intentionally Subvert that a little bit. I think in, in art, the whole idea of like um, when you have someone who's very artistically sensitive and sees like interesting marks and um, has a real ability to see beauty in things that other people would think of as being ugly or clumsy you know there's it's it's that like drawing with your wrong hand kind of thing mm -hmm. like someone who has no idea how to embroider but has a great eye yeah is a is an interesting combination i've yeah. always i've always found that interesting i'm looking forward to seeing what some of my students do so that my students are a mix of people who have all kinds of experience and expertise in various needle needle arts needle crafts um but maybe not one that we're focusing on and then um and then newbies to that not new they're not totally new at art but they're um they are not stitchers. <laughs> I was blessed with a grandmother who um, really kind of had her hand in a huge array of different, you know, everything. She taught me to sew clothing when I was in my teens, well, before my teens and then into my teens. And then she... She introduced me to needlepoint and uh, knitting and crochet, which I never got good at. Um, she did rug hooking, cruel work, so very elaborate um, form of embroidery. I don't think she found cross stitch very interesting. It was too repetitive. Um, the form. She didn't find the meditative aspect in the, the repetition. Um, in fact, that's kind of in alignment with you, right? You tend to... Well, I can't even do like an inch long line without messing with it, right? <laughs> so if I were doing cross stitch, it would be very... might be punk's cross stitch. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> you know? yeah. Like... <laughs> Just my nature, yeah. I, I definitely inherited traits from her. There's no question. You know, I, I I know you well, and I know you certain things you have patience for, but lots yeah. of things you don't have patience for. And it serves you in so many ways, right? Like it. I'll invent. A, you'll to, invent ways to, to get around, like, tedium, right? Yeah. Or, um, like, I want this look, or, but I there's got to be a better way of doing it. Like, okay, yeah. what if I, like, duplicate it in this way? Or... Yeah, or I don't have time for that. So yeah. what's what's the alternative that will get me that will get me there? Um, and it's led to some very interesting things, hasn't it? Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Ooh, it's getting nice and snarled again. <laughs> so, yeah, 
of course, if you if if you uh, watching this video get interested in embroidery, if you're working with a fine cotton like this pillowcase, and you want something tidier and cleaner, which would be totally understandable. Um, I will do my best to show you the snarls as I get more of this done. Um, then you want to use a sharp needle to poke into the whole, the natural weave, the fine weave of this cotton. Normally this uh, blunter needle would be used either for um, a much more open weave or a uh, knitwear. Right, where it sort of hits the, um and sort of deflects and finds the one of the gaps between the thread, the, the yeah. weave is I guess is the word. I'm yeah, for. you don't want to be piercing knitwear. You just want to you want the needle to insinuate itself and find, find the natural the gap. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, so I'm making kind of punk on a small scale punk embroidery here. It's making me happy though. Punkatino. It's funny, that's not actually what I envisioned when I first uh, started the stitching. I was I actually pictured in my head ahead of time uh, a tidy embroidery. But Phil then as soon as I got hands on, I couldn't resist. <laughs> Philippa says, one of my grandmothers taught me to sew and embroider and the other taught me how to smock. Oh, wow. My grandmother smocked me adorable little dresses when I was a tot. And I remember and f coming across one she had in progress that I guess she didn't get done in time before I got too big, I guess, for, for it. And uh, I was just amazed at the workmanship. So I've heard that term, but I don't know what it means. Yeah, so it's smock. stitching that, that pinches... Oh, okay. But in right, a yes. pattern. Okay, yes. And I've so seen it's that. really I just beautiful. Didn't know that was the yeah. term for it, right? Yeah. So it was traditional, like there'd be a panel of smocking, and yes. then the dress would sort of would billow sort of out from that. Fall from that, yeah. Yeah. It was a great um, young girl's dress because absolutely no restriction on movement, and yet mm -hmm. this really beautiful. Mm -hmm. Marie says. Conversation brings to mind Judy Chicago and the dinner party. Mm. I've seen pictures of that work. It's like a very large triangular installation, right? Yeah, triangular right. table. Yeah, triangular and each table. Each place width. setting is um, an important woman in history. Okay. See and, that I, I and the plates are the ceramics are hers with. Uh, patterns of vaginas on them. Okay, right, right. And uh, are the other uh, accoutrements of the table also, um, do they also have imagery, like napkins or sure whatever? Symbology, at least. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, it really, I remember when it came to the AGO, I was still growing up and... Uh, I remember it was quite the earth-shattering thing. Not that, not that anyone took me to see the show, although who knows? They might have had an age restriction on it, given that it had just adjust the angle. The sun seems to be hitting me in a certain way. You get to see all my table mess, isn't it? Isn't that nice? <laughs> um, yeah, they might have had an age restriction. Ontario was pretty puritanical in those days. I remember in the news shows being shut down because of the content and oh yeah yeah you can have people it's crazy killing each other and beheading each other and blowing yeah. each other up but yeah. god forbid we should have a vagina have anywhere. some yeah or just or and other controversial art yeah yeah the, what what was controversial then and would be considered controversial now are a bit different Thank goodness. <laughs> it's 
quite fun being a bit a bit random with these stitches, I've got to say. Oh, I have an idea for when I get to the end of this blood vessel. So from Wikipedia, yeah. the answer to the question, what was the purpose of Judy Chicago's The Dinner Party? But it's succinct and quite oh, good. good. So The Dinner Party was created by artist Judy Chicago with the assistance of numerous volunteers with the goal to... Quote, Again with the volunteers. You see how that happens a lot? I <laughs> notice that, you know, I, of course there are exceptions, but there, there are a lot of men who want to do their thing their way and i'm one of them right okay. I, I i do not collaborate very much no nope. but women collaborate incessantly <laughs> which is interesting <laughs> isn't it it's telling yeah it is um with the goal to quote end the ongoing cycle of omission in which women were written out of the historical record and they weren't at the table quite right? literally yeah they yeah, weren't yeah. invited to be yeah. at the table they yeah. weren't welcome at the table yeah. they yeah. you know so yeah widely considered the first epic feminist artwork. Yeah. God. Good for her. Yeah. Good for us. Yeah. And good for her. Good for society. Yeah. Philippa says, it was a breathtaking show. I saw it twice, once mm. at the AGO and also in Montreal. Right. Good for you. And Susan says... There was also a crowdsourced quilt that accompanied the touring show. Was wow, there? Cool. Crowdsourced. See, again, that yeah, wonderful. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. quilting has such a history, has that history. Yeah, of absolutely. that. Yeah. I uh, forgot to mention my grandmother quilted as well. I forgot yeah. that. Yeah. It was, Susan says, it was indeed breathtaking. The memory yeah. has stayed with me. Yeah. Yeah. I bet you, know, you saw something seminal at a, at a seminal moment. Yeah, you know, like it. Sadly, it would still be fairly radical now, but then. But then it was wow. It yeah, was insanely radical. Like, yeah. Absolutely. Ruth Oppenheim has joined us. Hello, Hi, Ruth. Ruth. Welcome aboard. Nice to have you along. I'm just doing a little punk embroidery here, Ruth, <laughs> of a of an anatomical heart. In the spirit of our Friday class. She says she got into her studio to work and meant to switch on it too and got so immersed in what she was doing Aww. that she lost track of it for a little while there. That's lovely. <laughs> but I'm so glad you could join us, uh, yeah. you know, and that's fantastic that you were so caught up in your studio. That's what you want. Well, I don't know. It's not snarling as much. Am I doing something wrong? <laughs> <laughs> I do seem to be very good at getting my loop caught up in this little case, though. I think I better move that out of the way. There we go. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons I'm, I can be impatient is because I want to do all the things, you know, like I'm doing this, right. That which it should be enough, yep. but I'm looking over, I, you know, I picked this up, which meant that I looked over and I saw this beautiful waxed uh, thread. I don't think it's linen. I think it, I think it might be polyester, but it might be linen. Anyway, it's just wonderful stuff to work with. Very, very waxed and, behaves differently because of that has a lovely hand feel um yeah so i just suddenly got a it's it's like getting a, a hankering for a snack <laughs> it's a tactile artistic snack excuse me bless you dear no bless you I'll 
try some just diagonals for a little while. Just to mix things up a little bit. I would hate for things to become predictable, right? No danger there. I don't know how many of you are on Instagram, but if you go to Instagram and go to the Redhead Galleries account, where I'm a, an artist collective gallery, uh, where I'm a member, I made a, a little video for the, the, the account for the gallery to celebrate, it's it's the Redhead Gallery's 30th anniversary year this year. Lucky us in in COVID year. So uh, the celebrations have, have had to be a little different than they might have been. And um, it's also, I wanted to celebrate the fact that we reached 2,000 followers on Instagram, which was it's been pretty exciting this fall because we have a fundraiser going on. And so I've been in charge of the social media campaign for that. And, um, uh, anyway, um, there's, there's a committee and, but I've been doing the, um, the posts and, um, Anyway, I'm I that's what I was doing last night. Trying to squeeze it in before I went to before I wound down for bed, uh, scheduling it for this morning and I'm When did you go to bed last night, Kim? Or should I ask? You shouldn't ask. Okay. Yeah, it was quite I late. Did, dear. I didn't ask. It was quite late. Was it quite late? It was quite late, yes. That's fair to say. Okay, you can't really see what I'm doing, so why don't I show you the progress? I'm getting close to the point where I'm going to try the thing that's occurred to me. So there's my punk stitching, and the most recent stitching you can see is a bit more tidy. And there's some snarls there of black fibers. And just have to get down to... So, Susan, there. I'm chuckling to myself as I read your question, uh, and now I'll put it to Kim. What? She says, how do you plan to use the heart? <laughs> no, no. Um, I'll make the heart, and then I will figure out what it is. Not, obviously, it's a heart, that part, but what it is as a as a piece, as a potentially an ingredient in a larger thing or something that can be made into a form of some, some other form, you know, an upholstered thing or, uh, or combined with other media and layers. So, um, yeah. I make the thing in faith and um, then learn what it is. There are times I make work that I have a very strong finished product vision for. and um, But an awful lot of professional artists who are stu really studio-based artists, that's where they discover things, um, they need to have regular daily, if possible, studio time to noodle around and do things and make things and then figure it out because that's how creativity kind of works. You, you have a starting point, but you don't... I think it's it's actually a small minority of artists who can start with the end in mind and end up with something genuinely uh, uh, interesting, challenging, 
stretching. Yeah. I mean, you can you can start with an, an idea, but well, you have for, to start with it, a starting point for sure. But but it can often just end up like, well, I thought it was going to be something along in that direction, and then it ended up going a completely different direction because yeah. I discovered things along yeah. the way, right? And that means that the work is alive. So now I'm going to try the thing. I'm going to have to take my glasses off, though. <laughs> Marie Payne says table runners were all embroidered. Oh, I didn't know that. Ah, neat. Yeah. I've seen, and we have, a woven one. No, I think but... she might mean in the Judy Chicago and stuff. Ah, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. That must have been wonderful. Just that, like, you know... That combination of bigness, which of course has been associated with uh, Western male art, definitely uh, the goal in, mod in modern age woman. as well as pre-modern age. I mean, look at the old paintings in museums that are just massive, right? Um, so to make something that scale, but then have all the detail and richness of those uh, lesser art forms in it. Yeah, that's lesser, really, quote unquote, really right? radical, yeah. very radical. Yeah. And very challenging of the, of the establishment. Quote. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I'm sure there were, there were people in the art world who hated it. Never mind outside of the art world, right? Oh, I'm, oh, I'm, okay, I'm getting happy. <laughs> My idea is doing something interesting, so I'm pleased. And this idea only occurred to me as I was stitching along, right? Marie said, I did see the exhibit. It was truly amazing. Oh, that's so great, Marie. Yeah. I just read about it in the newspaper. I'd have to look it up to see how old I was at the time. It was, they said it was 1975 to 79. So I don't know when it came to Toronto exactly, but maybe 76, 77. That would make sense to me, 76. Um, sort of my intuitive sense of it. And it's not like I couldn't have gone to the art gallery myself, but it's not something I... Ruth Oppenheim confirms, 77. Ah, thank you, Ruth. Got it through that snarl. That's good. Okay. Just snip that little bit off first. All right, sharing time again. So you see how now it has a much stronger linear feeling, even though it's all irregular. Um, I teach drawing, have taught drawing for years. And uh, so it's like a variegated line, but with stitching. Um, but yeah, I ran the thread through the the, the stitches as though they were croquet croquet hoops. <laughs> no. Just wickets, uh, I guess they're called, yeah. Just seeing um, seeing you hold that up um, mm -hmm. and looking at it with the white chalk, it'd be interesting to maybe have something less ephemeral than that, but that was paint, like a white milky paint with some degree of transparency to contrast with the dimensional dimensionality mm. of the stitching 
Well, I mean, one possibility is once I've stitched it, I could bring in some paint pen. Right. To draw in some details or something. Well, that that's a nice start. That's making me happy. Just gonna look at my reference now and decide what my next move is going to be. Okay, I know. a neck. I'll just pull it through. <laughs> mm -hmm. What are you doing over there, dear? I have been, um, I have a set of fine liner um, markers. Yeah. You know, lots of different colors. I mean, a limited number. But, yeah, but a variety. And I've been uh, playing quite a bit with that recently, just um, sort of building more complex color ideas by layering them up in different ways. Um, so that's what I've been playing with. Oh, yes, like that drawing you were doing... That incorporated a house plant or something. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's kind of. And so I, I just have a little color idea, and then it's relatively. Kind of like the impressionists a little bit in terms yeah, of the yeah. um, building up, mixing optically mixing optically the colors mixing, exactly. Yeah. Um, and once I get the idea, it means that it's relatively low. It's repetitive, so I can something that I can do while we're chitter chatting, and that's nice. Yeah, it has that in common with stitching. Oh, um, just in case anybody here is interested, uh, Quest Art School and Gallery in Midland has hired me to teach a Zoom class, so you can be living anywhere and take it. One of um, the advantages of Zoom. Yeah, exactly. Um, on... Oh geez, now I'm now now I've done it. What's it <laughs> called? It's jelly plate printing, jelly plate monoprints, but with a, a specific focus on creating great textures and shapes. And uh, Ooh, the monoprints, really yeah, I think it's really fun because it's a three hour it's a three hour workshop. And that's it. And um, I'm sorry, I don't know exactly how much it costs. Cal, would you mind looking up their website Not at all. and sharing it in the chat, just in case anyone's interested? Um, uh, but they're a nice group to work with. Uh, we've both Cal and I have taught in person up there a few times. Um, it's a bit awkward because um, we don't have anywhere to stay there. We used to stay in our camper van. And uh, we no longer have our camper van. So it's a, you know, in that sense, it's a good thing that we're having to do Zoom classes. Um, anyway, I, I um, uh, making textures, layering up textures, 
shapes, shape with texture, um, and making beautiful finished artworks or uh, papers you can then use in collage <clears throat> and mixed media. Um, or, or, um, or collaged onto objects to make them beautiful. I think it, I'm looking forward to, to teaching it because it's fun. Part of the fun is actually before the course starts and hunting for the unusual and unconventional objects and things that uh, will help you make the textures. I, I actually get such a thrill out of that. Unfortunately, it means that I've got containers and containers full of said <laughs> objects <laughs> in our shelves in the basement and in bins. Yeah, there's something I need to tackle this winter big time. But, you know, I'll, I'll weed out the things I have too many of or um, that I haven't found that useful. And I'll test some out that I haven't been using because you know that thing of you have something, you just haven't got around to using it. You should use it because it's really cool. Um, yeah, so I will, uh, I'll bring some of those out and get them active and see how I feel about them then. They'll have to prove their worth to me. <laughs> Materials that have to show their worth or their kick to the curb. Yeah. Sing for their supper. Yeah. Another thing I'm trying to do is use up some materials, like especially uh, pads of paper. I, I've, I've had too many partial pads of paper on the go for quite a long time. Does anyone else have that problem? <laughs> you know, no, I how can't many, imagine anyone else would have that problem. How many uh, partially used sketchbooks and watercolor pads and mixed media pads? Um, what drives me crazy is when I know I have one that's already open, but I can't find that one. So, <laughs> so then have I, have to, I have to open another one. And then later on, I find the other one or the other three. You know? So, um, yes, I realize this may be a problem uh, more common among people like me with a bit of ADD, but um, I don't think I'm alone. <laughs> You're definitely not alone. So... Yeah, speaking of, I can be quite forgetful, and um, I went downstairs today to spin on my bike trainer and looked up and peering at this thing I've got hanging from a, a, a kind of special hanger rack I made and uh, trying to figure out what it was, and then finally remembered and went, oh, right, I was supposed to do two more. Uh, it's an experiment. And uh, there are two variations on what I did to this fabric that I want to try in order to see how the results change. And uh, I just forgot. <laughs> but I better not forget too long because I will. I want to share it with my class. Hey, Mia. Mia. Welcome, welcome back. I feel like I haven't seen you for a while. Yeah, she says, long time no see. Hope everyone is well this beautiful afternoon. Likewise. I have a question for Kim. Yeah. I'd love to take her Photoshop class, but I only have Paint Shop Pro. Would that work? Unfortunately not. This is this is definitely a learning learning how to use Photoshop, Adobe Photoshop CC not Adobe Photoshop Elements. So it is, um, 
working specifically in that program, which um, is the one that I have, oh, decades of expertise in. Um, and it's, it's the industry standard for photography and, um, and a lot of digital art like I do. Um, that's not to say you can't make wonderful creative things in other programs. Totally you can. Uh, but but uh, Photoshop is the category definer. So I'm very sorry that that, that, that if that means you can't do it, but um, one of the things is you can, you can give it a try and the uh, Photoshop is on a subscription basis with, it comes with Lightroom and uh, something else for $9.99 US per month. Probably bridge, right? Bridge is free. Oh, okay, sorry. And I think there's okay. something else. Yeah, anyway, right. um, yeah, so you can certainly try it out and see because it might help you understand some concepts um, and uh, get some ideas for things you could do in other programs even. There are other programs. And, you know, if I ever find myself not as swamped as I usually find myself, <laughs> my plan is to, there, there are a couple of alternative programs I just need to sit down with and, and learn um, because I know Photoshop, it won't be as steep a learning curve as uh, someone who's new to it, but um, so that I can offer some alternative equivalent courses in alternative software. But so glad to see you here, Mia. We've missed you. I, I know I have. Yeah, likewise. Yeah. So I made a nice new branch. Um, a, t a tidy one. What? Yeah, I know. What was I thinking? But, on, you know, Kim. hey. Yeah. You're wetting down the If team. I'm consistent, then I'll be boring, right? So you can see the little forked branch that I've done in the <laughs> yep. veins there. So Mia okay. said, Mia replies. Thank you so much for the explanation. I used to have Photoshop, loved it, used the art filters a lot, but then got a new computer and my old Photoshop stopped working as it now requires payments. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I, I'm with you, Mia. I, uh, I'm i still using a very old non... You shouldn't actually announce this on no. YouTube, dear. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, but uh, because... Old versions of Photoshop, I, Adobe has had some kind of disagreement with, with some company who made a component that went into older versions of Photoshop. And so uh, about a year ago, I think it was, they announced that um, anyone who was using old versions of Photoshop needed to stop because they, they're license was revoked that's the thing right even even when you purchased the the software before it became subscription software purchases are always uh licensed not not outright ownership and um and there were actually some some litigations against people who weren't even big companies who were using the old version so it was a it was a way for them to uh serve notice to the design community especially i think design and photography community that that uh they, they meant business about this so yeah 
it is an extraordinary tool. And so generally the, um, the other digital tools offer a subset of what Photoshop is capable of. So maybe next year I'll find some time to do that research, Mia. And um, if you subscribe, I think you're a subscriber to my newsletter. And if you are, you'll you'll definitely hear about any course I offer in an alternative. Mia answers, I had no idea my license was revoked. I will look into getting Photoshop CC. So happy to see you and... Be here with all of your art friends, all of you art friends. Likewise, That's yeah, welcome lovely. back. lovely, yeah. yes. Are you working on anything or just hanging out? Or yeah, just hanging what? out with us or? Playing with something in particular? And by the way, if you go to the my course page on my website, uh, so kimlico.ca, and uh, the current and upcoming page, there's a link to the, the course page for Photoshop. In that page, there is a direct link to the Adobe page that has the packages. There'll be three in a row. And it's the one that's $9.99 a month. That is Photoshop CC. Anyway, just wanted to, to let you know that so that it might save you some trouble. All right, I've got a little bit of an edge to my heart now. Kind of fun. This is definitely a really good warm up for me. Um, one of the things I want to make is a is a, an expressive stitching sampler, and um, you know, but just warming up on something very simple and without any special requirements is, is a great way to get going. Don't you find that, dear? I do. Yeah. Something I've noticed about creativity is it's so easy to think, well, what will I do? I don't have any ideas. And then you, so you don't do anything, but actually what you need to do is start doing something, pretty much anything. Yeah, like, pretty much anything. Just honestly. like scribbling on the page almost. Like I, I have painting bases for things. Yeah. I have in my sketchbook as I remember a few years ago, I was really stuck. I yeah. finally like had finished a whole bunch of teaching or something and I had time and it's like, yeah. okay, finally I can make art. And it's but like, the well was dry. The well was dry. And I just have several pages in which I just like did silly stuff. And, That's an awesome thing to and, do. And, you know, it stopped because I, you I got several busy. pages of silly stuff and then you could see the last ones were starting to have ideas. <laughs> and then it was like, yeah. I was off to the races, but um, we tend to judge that silly stuff stage as saying, well, I'm not really accomplishing anything. This, this isn't real. This doesn't matter. Blah, blah, blah. When in fact, it's very real. It really does matter. And um, it is accomplishing stuff. Uh, it's just, it's like plants are growing underneath the surface of the soil before they breach the surface. And it's the same with creativity. So it doesn't always look like what you want it to look like, what you think it needs to look like. In fact, it can be invisible. And yet just remember I said, uh, some of you were here at the beginning when I said, you know, I just, I make things in faith. I just start making things, start doing things. And then I figure out what they are later on while it's still in process or after I've, finished a, a stage or an entire piece even. And uh, yeah, you have to make in faith and the, the, it will bear fruit. 
when you just do. Of course, it feels so much better when you actually feel inspired. Are you are you looking up quest? I've already I sent. Oh, you did the quest. quest okay, time, thanks. So, yeah. yeah. Yes, I've done gel plate printing a uh, quite a few times here on the virtual studio party. It's one of my fun go-to media. It's responsive and inventive and Things can happen very quickly in it. So Mia says, I was looking at Kim's website, but I'm not sure how to find the $9.99 a month Photoshop. Okay. I will look more closely after we're finished. Yeah, go to the Teaching Plus. Under Teaching Plus, there's Current and Upcoming. Click on Current and Upcoming. It takes you a page with Courses. Click on the button for the Photoshop course. It takes you to a page that's full of information just for the Photoshop course. And there is a, a kind of a, almost like a boxed item that is about what you'll need for the course. And it includes a link to the Photoshop. It takes you to the Adobe website that then has the options. Okay, so hopefully that helps. Okay, time for another pull through. I'm getting inordinate an inordinate sense of pleasure from this pull through thing to make my lines. I'm sure it is a technique that's been used for centuries, but I just invented it for myself. <laughs> well, I should give you a heads up that it's 3.33. Is it really? Oh my God. I had no idea. Time has been whizzing by. As so often happens when you're in the zone doing so making something right and and in pleasant company congenial com companionship mm -hmm. well i'm going to i'm going to do just stitch around a little bit more, yeah. but I'll show you how it is right now. You can see it's starting to take shape. So I think the finer veins are good, or, or arteries are good um, with this tidier approach. And then I'll make the thicker ones gnarlier, like I started right, out with. Right. So, um, yeah. That feels like something that makes sense to me. I we'll have to get the edge developed over to where the next big one will be. I miss going places like the Gladstone Hotel in downtown Toronto. Well, being able to go places and see art and... And, and people. <laughs> Remember people. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the introvert in me loves a lot of things about the... staying at home a lot more and being online for more of a lot more of the activities because I honestly couldn't make physical activities very often because of my stamina issues and the um, 
the sheer quantity, right? Like it's different if you live in a small town that there's just a Toronto just has in addition to Peel region has so much going on. Yeah, it's, I, I kind of feel like COVID has been a, a relief in many respects. Well, your schedule was running you ragged uh, before COVID hit. So it it was yeah. like you've gotten healthier and oh yeah, I mean you look better. You're you know you have more well, energy. It's not, not as overextended, but yeah. but even even apart from that, yeah, it is tends to be our nature. I think uh, you know to as humans to try and like do as much as we can. And like, there's so much yeah. great stuff, especially in an urban center with lots of culture, like the GTA. Yeah. Um, and it can be exhausting. Yeah. yeah. Genuinely. Yeah. yeah. So Mia replies. Also, I love taking photos. So I'm going to sign up for the Instagram for artists video only since. It's oh, over. cool. Yeah. Love the stitching. So inspiring. Well, thank you, Mia. Stitching as drawing is how I think of it, you know? And since I love to draw, that's not off-putting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, this relates to your current, um, what's your course that you're teaching? Yeah, right Contemporary Mixed Media Explorations. This it, this version of it, it's a sort of, you know, I, I run it and focus on different things each time. Um, uh, this one's incorporating textiles and textile processes. So, um, yeah, we're two classes in, and uh, it's very exciting. The group is, the students are just amazingly energetic and enthusiastic. So the Facebook group is on fire. I can't believe in the first week of our class how much different stuff people have been posting including just stuff they've observed right like like you're talking about taking photos mia you know going for walks and sort of noticing things that we focused on on the first in the first class and finding them in the world yeah very that's i think that's so lovely oh now i need to switch my stitching method i'm just noticing Mia uh, says she found the Photoshop link on the right-hand side of the course page. So, oh, yeah, good, perfect. Good. Perfect, Mia. You've got yeah. it. That's good to know. Yeah. yeah. Um, shall I just go up to the top of this line here before we wrap things up? It's always nice to have a feeling like you've done a section of whatever that means <laughs> of any given thing. Yeah. Oh, Yeah. I sort of like how this is shaping up. I like what happens uh, being in a group like this, even though it is virtual. Um, I find it brings energy to this doing something, you know, um, Ruth says she has to run brief, but lovely seeing you both. Likewise, Ruth, thanks for dropping by and spending yeah. time with us. And we'll see you again see soon. You next, maybe next week for the uh, collage jam. And in class. Yeah. Yeah. Take care. And get longer stitches going as I get closer to the top because, of course, the blood vessel gets bigger. So I want bigger stitches. And I'm going to come back down and get them more gnarly afterwards, but not during the virtual studio party. Almost there. 
Excellent. All right. There we go. Now, see, this is getting broad here. It's a bigger vessel, so I'm going to make that part more gnarly. I've got a good start, though, making it wider. And I'll make it more gnarly as I go down, and then I'll start bringing in these little secondary blood vessels um, at, while I'm down there. So that's exciting, I think, getting that far along. So, yeah. So Mia says, my beautiful mother used to stitch and create beautiful pieces, tablecloths, and some pictures. I used to watch her work and relax with her. Wish she wish still had her with me. Oh yeah. 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 That sounds so lovely. And Susan says so thanks. Susan says thanks. Thank and, you, Susan. Yeah, thanks so for stopping by. So good to see by. you here. And Mia says, looking like a heart already. Love it. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh shaping up. So we'll see where it goes. Um, you know, whatever I'm doing uh, two weeks from now at the next virtual studio party, I will make sure that I, whatever I've progress I've made on this, I bring to it so you can see. Um, yeah, since you saw it at this stage, hopefully I'll get it, you know, much farther by then. And of course, next week we're on Cal's channel, Saturday at 2 p.m for the virtual collage jam. Those so you who love to collage. That's right. And again, you can bring anything you want to work on or Absolutely. play with and um, or nothing at all and just hang out and chill. So either way, we'd love to see you if you're able to make it and uh, hope you're staying safe and finding ways to uh, connect uh, in addition to the virtual studio party to connect with people and um, other artists. And yeah, and stay comfortable and happily occupied during the second wave that's happening and the second lockdown that's happening now in the GTA and elsewhere. Um, okay, so take care, everybody. Philip says, thanks so much, Kim. Beautiful work. Going outside for a walk now. Excellent. Yes. Perfect. And Mia says, thank you both for sharing your artistic talents and time. See you soon. See you soon, yeah, Mia. See you, Mia. Have a great walk, Philippa. And take care, everybody. All right. Bye for now. <laughs>